are live at the Catholic Leadership Conference in Birmingham, Alabama. EW10's Bookmark, I'm Doug Keck, your host with our guest author, Mr. Gary Zemak, an author of two books, Listen to Your Blessed Mother, Mary's Words in Scripture, and also A Warrior's Guide to the Bible, 50 Verses to Ease Anxieties. Hey, welcome, Gary. Thank you so much. Hey, it's great uh, to meet you. Great to meet you, I heard too. Your, well. I heard your name. I've seen these books around, but I haven't had a chance to get you here on Bookmark and talk to you, and it's great that you came by the Catholic Leadership Conference. It's an honor to here be here. Thank you. I know Thank you. Michael Warsaw put it together, our, our chairman here, and we appreciate everybody coming to town. Thank you so much. It's an honor. That's great. So let's talk about the two books. Listen to Your Blessed Mother and the other one's A Warrior's Guide to the Bible. Let's start right. with Listen to Your Blessed Mother, Mary's Words in Scripture. One more time, people would say, you know, I love Our Lady. Do we need another book about Our Lady? What, what's special about Our Lady to you? You know, Doug, it's funny. I'm a cradle Catholic, and I never had a really good relationship with Our Lady. And then that changed. I made my total consecration to Jesus through Mary. I fell in love with her, and I realized that the more I love Mary, the more I'll get to love Jesus. And I want to share that with others. So mm -hmm. that's where, that's how the book came about. Is this also for people who maybe don't have a proper understanding of how Catholics view Our Lady? Absolutely, absolutely, because it's completely based on Scripture. Okay. And I thought that would be a great way to reach out to people who depend on Scripture, right. even our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, who can see that Our Lady right. is very important if right. we look in the Bible. Right, and you know, you've been involved with Catholic Radio 3 W10, right, yes. with Teresa Tomio's Absolutely. show, and uh, as well, I see you're connected here with Matt Swain, yes. uh, obviously, oh, good guy. From, our, yeah. from our morning show yes. out yes. of Cincinnati. And Matt, who's a convert, talks about his own distorted mm -hmm. view before he came into the church of, of Our Lady. He said, I mentioned that I used to think that from outside the church, Mary seemed to loom larger than Jesus. However, from inside the church, I found that she shrinks down to her normal size. Yeah, yeah. He said, when she said yes to God's will, she was the first to accept Christ into her heart. And I think that's always good for people to remember that right. in, in that way, she was the first disciple. Exactly. And the other exactly. thing is that just from a biological perspective, all of our Lord's personal traits and things came from Our Lady. Right, right, and we sometimes forget that. Right, that, that, and that's how important it is, and certainly why our Lord thought she was important. Now, in your introduction, say, why does Mary matter and why should we care about what she has to say? After all, if she's so important, why does she only speak on four occasions in the sacred scripture? And you say you're basing this on scripture, so why is there more than four pages in here? Because what she said and what she did is very important, and that's what I realized. Originally, this book came about because I wanted to learn more about Mary. I wanted to learn more about her, and I couldn't find another book that analyzed everything she said and did in the Bible. And I thought that's a great place to start mm -hmm. with the, the very word of the Lord, you know, and, and, and learn more about our Blessed Mother. Now you say, I've accepted Mary as my heavenly mother. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to accept her? Is, it, is that a formal thing? Was that a total consecration? It was, in my case, it was total consecration. Okay, like the demand for consecration. Absolutely, okay. which changed my life. It, it really did. did. Absolutely. How? When I accepted Mary as my spiritual mother, making my total consecration, I was able to accept whatever the Lord sent into my life, which ended up being a job layoff a month later, mm -hmm. which launched my full-time career as a Catholic evangelist and author. Mm -hmm. So it was a great blessing, and I trust Mary to lead me to Jesus. But it Jesus. didn't necessarily mean, seem like that at the time. Oh no, no, it was, it was difficult at the time, but I, I just felt that she was in charge. And, and I have trouble right. staying close to Jesus, right. and I need help. Right. And it's interesting too, in this book you talk about how that happened and how that led you out there. Yeah. In, the, in, the early, in the other book, we're going to talk about Warrior's Guide, right. you were worried about the fact that you might be losing your exactly. job. Exactly, right? and it did happen. <laughs> right. So, uh, but it's also interesting too, because you deal with the fact that even as a youth, as a cradle Catholic, you know, whenever we needed good weather for an outdoor <laughs> event, it was given that the Statue of Mary was placed on the window, always looking out always. as if she wouldn't know what the weather was like if she wasn't exactly. looking that way. So in some ways, we do have these kind of totemistic, mm -hmm. you know, like this is a charm a little right. bit sometimes we can use too. Right, and my mother was very devoted to Our Lady, but it was more like you said, like a ritualistic, put mm. the statue in the window and Blessed Mother right. will take care of us. The old days used to put a lot of times the statue of Our Lady on the dashboard of the car when all the yeah. cars were, were metal and they could you, you could put the magnet mm. right on Right, the right. But now, in the fall of 1988, something happened having to do with a miraculous metal novena that was important to your life, what was it? Yeah, I went to a miraculous metal novena just on a whim. 
I, I had an on and off relationship with Our Lady, didn't really understand her, but felt that, well, she's probably important. Mm -hmm. So my church was having a miraculous medal novena, and I was looking for a new job at the time. And I thought, well, let me go, see what happens. Let me give it to the Blessed Mother. Because the priest told me something I never heard before. He said, the minute you present an intention to Our Lady, she's gonna give it to Jesus. And I said, well, that sounds pretty good. Let me give it a try. It's like the Cana model, we always think exactly. of. Exactly. Do whatever exactly. he asks you. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, you talk about also when you got married, Eileen, your wife, yeah. 1997. And then, and so often you, you, you find this in people's lives who've made big changes, mm -hmm. especially, you know, you have a situation, you're having twin girls, uh, and then it turns out there's this transfusion syndrome, very rare, yes. orphan fatal condition, yes. put their lives in jeopardy. Now, ultimately, it worked out, but you said twice a week you went to Our Lady or Lord's Hospital, okay, so, yeah. uh, which is not a bad place to go if no. you're looking for a healing. You bet. Uh, but how did that impact you and your wife in your spiritual walk? It was amazing, Doug. It was one of the most difficult times of our life, but one of the most peaceful. We, we brought out our statue every night, we prayed our rosary, and we just felt Our Lady's peace. And, and the fact that she was with us. Right. And it was one of the hardest times, but yet one of the most beautiful and peaceful times that we've ever experienced. Well, do you ever wonder yourself, I mean, even from your friends and relatives you deal with today or people you dealt with in business, you were in computers. And yes, things, I was, right? yes. Uh, and you say to yourself, it's tough enough when you have faith and you have the ability to rely on our, our Blessed Mother, or our Lord. How do people who don't have that, how do they keep it together? And I guess the answer is they don't. They don't, I, I just can't imagine that. Right. And, and even though I've always had some degree of faith, it was minimal. Mm -hmm. It was a very, I was very lukewarm for right, most right. of my life. And I know what it's like to not have a good relationship with our Lord and our Lady. You're not very peaceful, you know, and, and I've struggled with that. Mm -hmm. Now you say, have you ever been visited by an angel? Have you? Personally, yeah. no. Personally, but our I lady have not, was, but our Lady was, yeah. And I'm always, I'm always cautious when I say that in one of my talks because somebody out there may have been visited yeah, by, by an angel. angel right. But no, yeah, but she was. She was visited by an angel and given a very important job. And she said yes. Right. Right? She said yes. She could have said no. But it's interesting, too, because you point out the fact that she said yes, but she also asked questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as part of her discernment. In and a it's sense, okay right? to right. ask questions. Sometimes right. people will say, well, she doubted. Well, she didn't doubt. Well, right. She said, all right, I'll do it. But Give me more information Patience, so, so I can I, do a better job. Exactly, right? right, and so can I, I can understand yeah. God's plan for my life. Exactly. Because at the end of the, the things, you have a reflection question. So after chapter one, uh, it says, reflect, you know, you, do you feel God is asking you to do something in your life? Obviously, you did, right? Yeah. Uh, how do you prepare to make a decision? Put yourself in Mary's place. How would you have responded? Put yourself in Joseph's place. How would you have responded? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're asked to do very difficult things. Just, just briefly, for a few years before my layoff, I felt called to work full time for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how it was going to be possible, right, right. and I was under spiritual direction. And my spiritual director said, "Well, how are you going to make money?" Right. And I said, "I don't know, but I feel this call." And I kept praying, and I figured that if the Lord wanted me to do this full time, mm -hmm. that somehow He would allow me to provide for my family. Right, and that's where you fall into the why is God allowing this to happen yes, to me? Yes. We pray, Thy will be done. At the same time, provide the Lord with a list of acceptable answers to our prayer. Exactly. Thy will be done, provided that it doesn't inconvenience me or, or cause me discomfort. Right. In reflection there, you say, think of a situation that required you to practice humility. How did you feel? Yeah, sometimes, it, sometimes it's hard. What's an example for you? What, what is it when you wrote that you were thinking about in your mind? When I first had this call to get out and spread the good news and really share Jesus with others, I got a lot of doors closed in my face. Mm -hmm. It was hard. Mm -hmm. It became about me and I had the question, am I doing this for me or mm -hmm. am I doing it for the Lord? Right. And I had to swallow my pride sometimes and say, all right, let me try another door. Mm -hmm. In Thy Will Be Done, chapter three, it says, so why was Mary able to make this definitive commitment while we fail so many times? Much of it has to do with the fact that we're a lot like babies. Yeah. We're just immature, we just want what we want. We, we want, want what it. we want. We okay. don't want to suffer. It's all about me. You we know? want it now. We want it, and that's the other thing. Yeah. Instantaneously. Yeah, exactly. And the Lord doesn't work that way. And I've had to learn, and it's brought me a lot mm -hmm. of peace. I've had to learn that He has a timetable, and it doesn't always match my timetable. Everything the Lord does is according to His plan. His, right. his timing is perfect. And many times, as we've talked to people on this, uh, you know, over the years on this set, 
it becomes more evident after the fact. Oh, yeah. One can look behind and see how the pieces fit together and how that brought you to where you are today. That's right. And That's how right. if you had gotten the thing that you thought you wanted wow. or whatever, how that might have changed your life totally. Definitely, definitely. And, and, and I'm finding the more that I accept his plan, even if I don't fully understand it, mm -hmm. the more peaceful I am. Right. You say, while discerning God's will is often requires prayer and meditation, sometimes it's a lot easier to discover. What do you mean discover? You mean just work through it and see where things go? Or? Exactly, because sometimes you have to try things, and that's what I've learned. I'm learning that I need to take one day at a time. I had a six-figure six income when mm -hmm. I was working as a computer programmer. Mm -hmm. When I went full-time as a Catholic evangelist, and speaker, author, I have no guarantee of any income. You were so a seven-figure by then, right? Yeah. This, uh, the decimal was in a different place. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Good point. Good point. But it, but there's a certain sense of taking one day at a time, not walking by darkness in darkness necessarily, but walking by faith, which is exactly what Our Lady did. Mm -hmm. We sometimes forget she wasn't given all the details up front. Mm -hmm. you know, she wasn't omniscient. She didn't know the full plan. Right. Every step. Exactly. And this point you say. Uh, the point that Mary is trying to make is that none of us deserves to live forever with the Lord in eternal happiness. You think yeah. we all feel entitled these days? I think we do. I think we do. And we lose that sense of gratitude. I think we're not aware often that the Lord redeemed us. Mm -hmm. You know, due to original sin, we don't deserve heaven. Right. But because of what the Lord did and His great mercy, He allows us this to live gift, with Him eternally. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know I, I took that for granted for mm -hmm. many years. Right. You know? You say Jesus is stressing, this is in a uh, chapter of spoken words here, chapter 7. Jesus is stressing the importance of spiritual poverty. And you were quoting, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This virtue can be possessed even if one is wealthy. Right. Conversely, there's no guarantee that everyone living in poverty automatically will possess it. And I think sometimes people think, That's right. You know, that w one equals the other when it doesn't, really. Exactly. And that's a hard concept. That was always a hard concept for me because I always was one that liked things. Mm -hmm. I liked possessions. I never had a problem. Right. Uh, I'm one of two children. I had everything I wanted when I was growing up. Right. And I started to realize that eventually things don't make you happy. Right. And that detachment from things makes you happy. Well, I think one of the great gifts, you know, I, I found somewhat in my life, I don't want to say I have all the time, but is the ability where you start to realize, I don't really need that. Yes. I don't, you know, I look at that and I think, oh, that'd be nice. And I think, do I really need that? Right. No, I don't. Right. And the ability to have that detachment makes your life a lot easier and a lot simpler. Oh, it really does. It really does. My family and I had to cut back quite a bit. Yeah, I understand. We're right. happier than we ever were. Right. You know, it's just such a blessing. Well, that's great. And that's listen to your blessed mother, Mary's words in scripture, okay? Uh, the second book we wanted to talk about, which you've written earlier, A Warrior's Guide to the Bible, 50 Verses to Ease Anxieties. Now, my understanding from reading this book is that it takes one to know one. And that the, the genesis of this is that you're a big warrior, or you used to be. Yes, I mean, by nature, I'm a very anxious person. Mm -hmm. Worried from the time I was a small child. And I wanted to try to reach out to my fellow warriors to say, you know, the Lord doesn't right. want us to worry, and He tells us that. Right, right. We always, yeah, yeah in fact, I, in the Teresa Tamia, who you mm. appear on her show, uh, mentioned the fact that in the uh, introduction she wrote here, the forward, I should say, that as a matter of fact, I've heard many a priest and preacher say the phrase, do not be afraid, or some version of it, yeah. and that it appears 365 mm. times, equal to the number of the days in the year. Yeah. So every day, and effectively, the Lord is saying to us, you know, do not be afraid. Now, and certainly, our, uh, you know, St. John Paul II, be not afraid, oh, that perfect, be not yeah. afraid as being such an important thing. And why do you think we're so fearful? I, I think a lot of times we don't trust the Lord. I mean, that's hard to accept or we don't want to suffer. I know in my case, that is the biggest thing. I know the way I want things to work out in my life. And if, if I can get to heaven without any pain, <laughs> I'm going to go for it. Right. But that's not the way we get to heaven. That's not what our Lord went through either. You say, over the course of my life as a warrior, I've learned an important lesson. Anxiety can be a blessing. How is it anxiety it a is, blessing? It is such a great blessing because, and I always tell this to people when I talk, when we're anxious, when we're afraid, that's our Lord knocking on the door of our hearts saying, please let me in. Mm -hmm. I want to help you. I want to bring you my peace, my supernatural peace that doesn't depend on earthly circumstances. Right. And I guess to some degree, if, if there's an anxiety level coming up, sometimes that could be a warning system yes. for yourself that there's something that's concerning you 
that you're unsettled about and maybe you should pay attention to it too. Exactly, right. exactly. Anxiety can be a blessing right. in, in that way too. You can, it can cause you to take steps to prepare. Right. It's like pain, you're having a pain in your shoulders That's and right. realizing, well, if you didn't have that, if the nerve was dead, you'd never know there was something That's wrong. That's right. Absolutely. So it'll loot you, uh, loot you to it. In order to obtain maximum benefit for this book, I recommend that you take it to an Adoration right. Chapel Church and read it in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Is that how you wrote it? or That is exactly how I wrote it. Okay. I took a notepad with me, sat before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, had a Bible, and I said, Lord, tell me what verses you want to, be, to have included. And, and <laughs> Doug, this is funny, sometimes I'll sit with my own book mm -hmm. in the Adoration Chapel and let the Lord speak to me through His And now, his the words. idea is, depending on what the issue is or what you're feeling anxious about, you can find a particular passage that kind of you, relates to that in, right, in your mind? Right, that's how I, I broke the book out into separate categories right, for the okay. different types of anxiety right. producing situations. I see situations. confusion here, right, is the, the first one. Right. And that, 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 that kind of uh, confusion, despair, doubt, fear, persecution, sickness, right. trial and tribulations. What is the secret weapon? The secret weapon is Our Lady. Okay. Our Lord gave her to us right. when He was dying on the cross as our spiritual mother. And right. I found, that's why the two books tie in nicely together, that she's going to help us. Right. And, and why did you start with confusion? Was there a reason you found that this was, was in a particular order that you felt of importance or the kinds of things people usually experience? Or? Confusion was a big one for me at the for time because I was okay. discerning do right. I go to work for the Lord full time? Right. What do I do? Should I take this job? Should I buy this exactly. car? Should I break off this relationship? Exactly. Because right. I think that's the first thing. Once a lot of us want to get closer right. to the Lord and we feel Him calling us, well, okay, Lord, what right. do you want me to do? You exactly. also had a lot of anxiety about finishing the book, right? I did. <laughs> right. I did. You talk about that as well. <laughs> I did. Now, you say here one of the most common costliest mistakes we commit when trying to make a decision is neglecting to ask for the Lord's help. And then you tell the story about Moses. And I thought this was interesting because you kind of hear it, but thinking of it in this light, Moses felt he was unqualified to lead. Yeah. The Lord proposed Aaron, Moses' brother, and an eloquent speaker could act as Moses' spokesman. Finally, Moses accepted his mission. But what was Moses' main problem? He ignored the Lord's offer of assistance and thought he would have to do everything by himself. Yeah, and I think that's our problem sometimes. Uh -huh. I know that's been always something that held me back. I'm not qualified. Right. I can't speak about my faith. I don't know enough. And you know, Mother and that's Angelica- really the call for Catholics and lay people to stand absolutely. up and do that. Right? And, and, and Mother is such an inspiration mm -hmm. for me because I look at her. She wasn't qualified to do what she did. And look, this whole network exists because she said yes mm -hmm. and trusted that the Lord would provide. And I think for a lot of us, we can, if we would just learn to say yes and let the Lord work through us right. as Mary did, great things can happen right. in our lives. You said, well, it's highly unlikely you're going to hear him speak to you out loud. You'll be able to hear the Lord's answer in the silence of your heart. Have you ever had, well, what's the closest experience you ever felt like something was really put on your heart and almost, almost auditorium? Did you ever have No, I, like the that? way the Lord, it's more with a, like a feeling for right. me, uh -huh. but it happens instantaneously. And it usually happens after I receive Holy Communion mm -hmm. or when I'm at the Adoration Chapel. I see. Okay. And I just feel that, okay, the Lord is telling me exactly what he wants me to do. Say, uh, we must actively follow Jesus. This implies obeying his teachings and not just claiming membership in the church. Mm. Many Catholics today feel that they can pick and choose you know, as we all know, the whole cafeteria mm -hmm. Catholicism, the ph phenomenon which you name as that, it's dangerous practice prohibits one from being true follower of Christ. If we enthrone ourselves as the ultimate authority for deciding moral beliefs, we possibly say to our followers, how can we be followers? Of in fact, instead we're following ourselves. Uh, so that's where, and, and when people do that, they just get more confused. Don't yeah, they? yeah. And it's something I struggled with over the years. To be honest with you, one of the hardest teachings that I still struggle with is loving my enemies. Mm -hmm. That's hard for me. Right. But Jesus said I have to do it. Right. And you know, I can't say. Because he didn't say it to like him. But <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it's hard for me sometimes. Right. No, it's easy to love people right. who love me back, but the people who don't. Well, our Lord even says, if you just care about those who care about That's you, right. what is there in that? You That's know what right. I mean? You say to yourself, ooh. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, he's, he's pretty tough for a guy who's just a hippie wandering around <laughs> telling everybody to love each That's other. That's right. Uh, despair, what am I going to do? Well, Jesus never promised a life free of problems. Mm. He did promise that he will provide the grace we need to endure. And there's that whole idea of never giving up. Right, right. Like Judas gave up and yeah. Peter didn't. Exactly, and I use that example all the time. They right. both denied our Lord. Right. Uh, right. Peter denied him, our Lord, uh, Judas betrayed him. But Peter was repentant. Judas just gave up. There was no hope. And so many people feel that they've sinned 
and their sin can't be forgiven. Mm -hmm. But yet it, or their sin can be forgiven if they just turn to the Lord. Chapter 3, Doubt. Having been a computer programmer mm -hmm. for most of my life, I know the joy that comes with watching your code work properly. For many programs, the happiness is usually accompanied by a feeling of surprise. Hey, my program <laughs> actually works. Exactly. Is that how you go through life? Uh, you know, that's <laughs> that's how I've been. And many times I would pray and then the Lord would answer my prayers the way I expected. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. this is real. And I think we grow in faith. It's, it's an ongoing process. And the more times we pray and we realize that the Lord's there for us. It doesn't always answer the way we want, but right. we start to have confidence that, okay, this is going to work out. Do you also feel, as you go along with this as well, that if you practice that and do that, that you become more accepting when he doesn't say yes? Oh, yeah. And more faith and trust that, okay, maybe this isn't the right thing for me, rather than thinking, oh, come on, he's not responding, or come on, I really want this, or I'm really upset because this is not what's being provided for me. Definitely, and even though I might not understand his reasoning, right. the more you know him, the more you love him, you realize he knows best. Right. And you start to say, okay, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. So would you go on Space Mountain again? Never. 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 <laughs> I learned something from that. It was, uh, that was quite an experience. Yeah, that's under the chapter fear. Yeah. 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 And it's funny because even though I wasn't in real danger on Space Mountain, it was a terrifying experience, experience. for me. Yeah. Right. You're not it, a roller coaster rider? I am not a roller coaster, coaster rider. rider. I don't like heights. Okay. I'm basically a coward. I mean, that's uh, my nature. Okay. But you know, and that's, that's what I've learned though. A lot of times we think we're in grave danger, but the Lord's in charge. Uh -huh. Of the 50 verses to ease anxiety, what's your favorite? Romans 8, 28. Which is? All things work for the good for those who love God. Right. Even the bad things, right. you know, even the suffering. He's in charge, he knows what he's doing. So these two books, were these your ideas to write these books? They or? were. Okay. They and, were. And then you approached the publisher about it? Yeah, Lord? I did. And it's funny, The Warrior's Guide, I had all kinds of ideas. I wanted to write a book. I had all kinds of ideas that got rejected. One day taking the dog for a walk, mm -hmm. the Warrior's Guide popped into my head. And, and that has really become my, the main focus of my ministry, mm -hmm. is focusing on overcoming anxiety. Right, right. And it's been a great blessing. And, and do you think there are people are more anxious today than ever before? I, I would tend to think they are. I think they are, they are. There's so much stress and people have so much pressure they feel to they do. all the time. They do. There's not a lot of downtime. Right? And they're looking for relief. Right. And then the beautiful thing about my message is I come into churches and I write my books and I say, I'm gonna right. teach you how to stop worrying. The answer is Jesus. Right. And I give them Jesus and the teachings of his church. And that's where I think, you know, what you were saying as well with the, the Adoration Chapel, oh. if only for the fact, not only that our Lord's presence is there, it's quiet yeah. and you get to get away and yeah. actually think, commune with our Lord and think and relax and rest right. and, and clear your mind. Yeah. And that helps to ease your, your anxiety as well, right? Right, but it's a hard thing for some of us. I'm right. a person who likes to take charge. I like You're to be control. control. Right, Absolutely. Right, right, sure, right. But it's, I'm learning to just and be to still. Fix it. To fix There's it. There's a problem, fix it. I'm gonna fix this and then I can't fix it. What am I gonna do? And sometimes that's where the greatest anxiety comes from, the things we can't control. Right, Because right. we wanna control them. Yeah, how am I gonna do this? Exactly. What's gonna happen? And that's where the Lord wants to, to supplement our efforts. He's gonna do the bulk right. of the work if we just trust him. And to remember at the end of the day, one way the L, it's gonna work out. Yeah. Even if we don't know how it's gonna work that's out. That's right. We know one thing in your mind, it, it will work itself out. It will. We may not be happy with it, but it's gonna work itself that's out. That's the key. And, and most of the times, the things we worry about never happen. Exactly. I always tell people, forget the what ifs. The what, right, if, right. The what ifs kill you. Yeah, the woulda, shoulda, could you. Yeah, they would yeah, say, those exactly. Kind of things. Yeah. So that really is the secret, to just focus on what you can right. do and just stay with the Lord. Right, there's uh, I was St. Joan, there's one, it's called, if, it, if, if and ands were pots and pans, there'd be no need for tinkers. Yeah. And it's just the idea, Shaw, that whole idea that what if this kind of, you just can't get caught up in no, those No, you things. can't. You, you can't. just have to deal with what it is. So you've written these two books. I'm assuming you were thinking or you were writing other books? Or There's another one on the way, From okay. Fear to Faith. Fear oh, to Faith. It's a step-by-step -step approach to overcoming anxiety. Because okay. people have asked for step by step. Right. Okay, okay, you gave give me the Bible verses. How do I do this? How do I implement and, this? And faith overcomes fear. Amen. Yeah, it does. Enough. It, it, the stronger your faith is, right, the less chance there is to be afraid. Because you, you know the Lord's with you. You know He's right. He's helping you. Okay, great. And that's where trust comes. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. My pleasure. Thanks Doug. for Thank stopping you. by. Thanks for coming by the Catholic Leadership Conference. It's it's I'm just sure an we'll honor. hear more of you and people can listen to you on uh, EWTN Radio Network. That's right. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Gary. Speaking with author Gary Zemak about two of his books: The Warrior's Guide to the Bible, Fifty Verses to Ease Anxieties, and Listen to Your Blessed Mother. 
Mary's Words in Scripture, both available through the EWTN Religious Catalog. Thank you for joining us. See you next time right here on Book Talk.